Are you struggling to manage peaks in your recording? Well, you're not alone. Whether it's belting vocals, rogue snare drums, pointy kick drums, or sharp plucky guitar lines, all those sudden spikes can wreak havoc on your mix, making it a real challenge to achieve the sound that you're after. Maybe you've tried compressors like the LA-2A, but found that they didn't give you the control you needed to shape your mix's dynamics. In this video, I'll introduce you to a tool that professional mix engineers swear by for peak control, the 1176 from Universal Audio. Hey, my name's Robert, and I'm passionate about helping you take your recordings and mixes to the next level. If that sounds interesting to you, subscribe to see more videos like this one. I remember when I was first learning to mix, managing peak levels was a real challenge. It's like no matter where you place the fader, those peaks were always jumping out of the mix and limiting your ability to shape its balance. That's where a peak limiter like the 1176 from Universal Audio comes in. From the original hardware unit to various emulations to the UAD version. This absolute beast of a compressor offers lightning fast response time and a truly unique interface that gives you the power to tame those unruly peaks and truly sculpt the dynamics of your tracks with absolute precision. From drums to vocals, guitars, and everything in between, the 1176 has got everything you need in a compressor. By the end of this video, you'll not only understand how to use the 1176 to achieve consistent peak levels, but you'll also discover discover a whole new world of possibilities for shaping the tone and impact of your mixes. But before we dive in, if you have a song you'd like mixed, get in touch with the link in the description. Let's schedule a call and get you the mixes you need so that you can focus on creating your best possible music. This video was brought to you by DistroKid, by far the fastest and easiest way to get your music distributed onto online streaming platforms, and their services are now easier than ever to use with their new app available now for iOS and Android. You can sign up today using the link in the description and get 7% off your first year's subscription with DistroKid. To begin, let's dive into the interface of the 1176 and explore a few of its key controls and features. To begin, on the far left here, we have the input gain. This is going to adjust the input level of the audio signal, and it's also going to affect the compression threshold. Next to that, we have the output level, which is going to control the output volume of the compressed signal. So if you want more gain reduction, you want to turn up the input gain. And if you want more volume, you can turn up the output dial. Next, we have the attack and release. The attack determines how quickly the compressor responds to incoming peaks. It has a range of 20 microseconds to 800 microseconds. Both are extremely fast. The faster times are on the right, and the attack gets slower as you turn the knob counterclockwise to the left. The attack time of the 1176 is legendary, and we'll talk more about why later in the video. Right under that, we have the release control, which adjusts the time it takes for the compressor to return to its normal state after compression. So just like the attack time, we get a faster release time on the right and a slower time as we move it to the left. So the 1176 is capable of achieving fast pumping effects as well as a more slower drawn out release. Again, more on this later, but it has a range of 50 milliseconds to 1.1 seconds. Next to the attack and release, we have the ratio buttons, and these buttons are probably the most iconic part of the 1176. Here you can select the compression ratio, but here's the fun part, you're not limited to a single ratio. You can select multiple buttons and try new combinations or experiment with the legendary all buttons in mode. Again, we'll explore this a bit more in depth later in the video, but to do this, simply hold shift as you click over multiple buttons. Next on the right, we have the metering and the metering controls, which provide a visual feedback on the output levels and the amount of gain reduction. Now these next two dials are UAD plugin exclusives. First, we have a mix control, which blends the compressed signal with the dry uncompressed signal for parallel compression right inside the plugin, which is really handy if you're into that. I know there is a lot of demand for mix knobs and plugins these days. And finally, we have the headroom control, which on this plugin allows adjustment of the internal operating reference level. By fine tuning the headroom, you can tailor the compression response and the distortion characteristics independent of signal input levels. So increasing the headroom allows the signal to be pushed higher before compression, while decreasing it enhances gain reduction and coloration. So understanding these controls will empower you to further shape your dynamics and the character of your tracks using the 1176. So up next, let's take a look at setting up the 1176 on a vocal example. 
So as some of you pointed out in the last video, the 1176 offers much more control and versatility when compared to something with a simple interface like the LA-2A we explored in the last video. And just like last time, we're going to go through how to set up an 1176 starting with a vocal example. So first we're gonna click the plus four meter button on the right side of the front panel. This will display the final output level. Next we're gonna set the input and output knobs to their unity position. Now the hardware manual says that it's approximately 24 or their 12 o'clock noon position for unity gain, but I did find that the UAD plugin equivalent was between 24 and 30, which means that the plugin overall runs hot. Next, we're gonna begin with the attack and release knobs fully counterclockwise or in the leftmost position. This will set them both as slow as possible. Next, play something and check on your meter that your level is hitting around zero dB VU. If it's not, adjust your input level at the source until the meter shows the optimal signal strength around zero VU. You can have some occasional spikes that are louder, but you wanna avoid any noticeable distortion. Right now, when the attack knob is in the off position, signal is passing through the plugin, but with a compression ratio of one to one. This means that no gain reduction is added, but we're still getting the color of the unit. To begin compressing, depress the four button to get a compression ratio of four to one. Then slowly move the attack knob to the right to begin to hear mild compression on your vocal. One foot after another and it's enough to make you go insane. Set the meter switch to GR in order to view the amount of gain reduction being applied to the signal. Note that as you increase the amount of gain reduction, the overall signal may be attenuated. So when required, use the output level to make up for the lost gain. One foot after another and it's enough to make you go insane. From here, you can continue to experiment by selecting different ratios and also try varying input levels and attack and release times for different compression or limiting characteristics. And before we delve any further into the specifics, let's quickly distinguish between compression and limiting. Compression is what's commonly used to control the dynamic range of an audio signal, while limiting is a more aggressive form of compression that's primarily focused on limiting peaks to prevent unwanted distortion and clipping. Limiting as a heavy form of compression has two key requirements. The first is a high ratio. A limiter typically employs a ratio exceeding 10 to 1 to effectively limit peaks and prevent them from surpassing a certain level. To accurately catch and attenuate those peaks, the limiter must also have a fast enough attack time. In essence, limiting combines a high ratio with a fast attack time to swiftly control peaks and maintain a consistent volume level. This combination is crucial for truly limiting the peaks of an audio signal, and the 1176 excels in meeting both of these requirements, making it a great choice for tasks where peak control is paramount, such as drums, vocals, or even the mix bus. So can you hear a difference? We're gonna do a comparison between a mix done with an 1176 at a four to one ratio and a mix done with an 1176 at a 12 to one ratio. Let me know your guess for which is which in the comments. Right, so A was the mix with the 1176 at 4 to 1, and B was the mix at 12 to 1. So it was driven a little bit harder on the input as well to really push into the higher ratio so you can hear more of that aggressive limiting effect. I kept the attack and release the same for both versions. However, based on our understanding, we could enhance the limiting effect by reducing the attack time. This adjustment would prompt the limiter to respond more swiftly to peak levels. But sometimes noticeable limiting isn't what you want. So up next, we'll take a look at a foolproof 1176 setting for conservative vocal compression that is inspired by the favorite soft drink of Texas.
That's right, we can't talk about compressing vocals on an 1176 without checking out the Dr. Pepper settings. Now, I know this sounds weird, but hear me out. In the 1920s, the Dr. Pepper marketing team was inspired by research on metabolism that showed that people experienced energy slumps at three specific times of day, and that eating something in time could prevent this crash. They used this research in a campaign to suggest that people should drink Dr. Pepper as a solution to this energy problem. <laughs> and well, drinking soda is likely not the best solution for hunger, the ad campaign lives on in these 1176 compressor settings. So we're going to start by setting our attack time to 10 o'clock or pointing at the 3. This is going to be on the slower side for the 1176. And then we're going to set our release knob to the two o'clock position, pointing at the five. Then we want to make sure that our ratio is at four to one. And we're going to set our input output to taste for some conservative compression. We're not looking to absolutely squash it, but we're looking for something that will squeeze the bottom end and add some top end clarity. One foot after another and it's enough to make you go insane. And I'm sorry for making you believe me Out in the open there's nowhere that's left for me to hide The Dr. Pepper 10 to 4 setting offers a decent set it and forget it approach to vocal compression striking a balance between minimal aggression, responsiveness, and you can adjust it from here to ensure the compressor remains active for just the right amount of time to provide a subtle yet effective gain reduction. Now let's take a look at the 1176 on guitar. We've got an example from Birding Out by Lexine, which has this plucky arpeggio doo-wop part and a more distorted bluesy section later on. For this example, I'll be using the silver face or blue stripe version of the 1176 because it's based on the earlier Revision A model that has more distortion when compared to the low noise Revision E model. This 1176 is great on single note instrumentals where you'd like to add presence to a sound without making it louder. We're going to set up the unit at our unity position, which I found to be between 30 and 24 with the headroom all the way up. And I'm looking to take about three to five decibels of gain reduction off, so set your input accordingly. Next, let's take a look at some of the manual's suggested settings for bass. We'll begin with a 4 to 1 ratio and both the attack and release at a fairly fast setting at around the 3 o'clock position. We'll leave the input and output around unity, which again is between 30 and 24, with the headroom control all the way up. Let's take a listen. <laughs> Now, if you want more distortion, you can switch the ratio up to 8 to 1 and increase the input gain to apply a little bit more color and gain reduction. Now, let's hear a comparison between the dry, uncompressed bass with the bass compressed at 4 to 1 versus 8 to 1. Thank you. 
One of the most unique features of the 1176 is this all buttons in mode, sometimes referred to as British mode because of its extensive use on many seminal British recordings of the 60s and 70s. According to the manual, the ratio goes somewhere between 12 to 1 and 20 to 1, and the attack and release times are changed as well. Distortion increases radically due to a lag time on the attack of the initial transients, a phenomenon which might be described as a reverse look ahead. This setting is famous for producing a distinctive, aggressive, and colorful compression time, often characterized by its rich harmonic distortion and punchy sound. To set up the all buttons in mode, simply shift click to engage all four ratio buttons on the unit. Combine this with a fast attack and release to get the maximum compression and saturation. In this demonstration, we'll showcase the unmistakable sound of the all buttons in mode. Listen as the dynamic range of the signal is compressed aggressively, adding warmth, presence, and character to the signal. Really listen for the increased harmonic content and overall energy brought forth by this iconic setting. Fantastic. As we can hear, the all buttons in mode is great on drums, room mics, or other ambient sources, or for an in-your-face vocal sound. It makes all these things sound absolutely huge. But in my opinion, it's not the most important part of the compression equation. And that's because the secret to using compression to achieve huge, larger-than-life sounds is not the ratio, it's the attack and release. This compression envelope controls how tight or open its grip is on the source. With heavy compression, release controls the size. A short release creates a pump as the needle returns to its unity position, and that makes the drums sound enormous. Now this is a real importance to the 1176 because of its program-dependent release. Now this is something that I actually learned while reading the manual for this video, and I actually included the 1176 in a meme in my last video, which didn't actually apply. So I learned something new while reading the manual, even after using the 1176 as a plugin and as the hardware unit for years. So my bad, read the fucking manual. <laughs> but what this means is the 1176 offers a variable release time based on transient versus tonal information. With a transient signal, the release is sharper and faster. Whereas with a tonal signal, the release becomes much softer and slower, meaning it can kind of do what the LA-2A is doing with overcompression, but with a lot more control. With a very fast attack and release, we are essentially only compressing the transients. As we extend the release to its longest, we are holding the signal for as long as possible. And in this setting, the signal sounds very small, dark, and condensed. As we back off the attack time, we begin to hear a bit of that transient poking through, and instead of tiny and dark, we get a brighter, punchier sound because of the transient. Now you can reduce the release time to find a movement that works with your tempo and source material. For a percussive source like this, I'm searching for something long enough to stretch out the decay of the drums, but fast enough to jump back and be able to react to each subsequent transient. But maybe you don't actually want to compress. 
Maybe you just want to add some extra flavor to your tracks. Well, the 1176 can also be used as a saturation unit by unselecting the ratio buttons and driving the input. On the hardware unit, you also have to turn the attack all the way to its slowest position. Let's check it out. We could also take the opposite approach and use an ultra fast attack time, the fastest possible on the 1176. Now, this is just another way of adding distortion when using the low noise model of the 1176. Let's do a quick AB. Using a field effect transistor or FET style compressor offers a more aggressive and punchy characteristic compared to opto or VCA compressors. FET compressors are famously known for their fast attack time, which makes them well suited for controlling transient peaks and adding excitement to your music. They can impart a distinctive coloration to the sound, making them popular for enhancing the presence and impact of instruments and vocals in a mix. This makes them a great choice when you're looking for a bold, upfront, in your face sound for genres like rock, pop, and electronic music. In a compressor, a field effect transistor acts as a variable resistor that controls the level of an audio signal passing through it. Here's a simplified explanation of how it works. The FET is controlled by a voltage applied to its gate terminal. This voltage determines the resistance of the FET, which in turn affects the level of the audio signal passing through it. When the audio signal exceeds a certain threshold level, the voltage applied to the gate terminal of the FET increases, causing the FET to reduce its resistance. This reduction in resistance reduces the level of the audio signal passing through it, effectively compressing the dynamic range of the signal. The amount of gain reduction applied by the FET is determined by the compression ratio set by the user. After the audio signal has been compressed by the FET, makeup gain may be applied to boost the overall level of the compressed signal to match the desired output level. So overall, the FET acts as the core component in the compression circuit to dynamically adjust the resistance based on the level of the signal, thus controlling the dynamic range and achieving compression. So I hope you enjoyed this guide to using the 1176. Last week was the first time that I've done a deep dive on a single compressor and whoa, was that video popular. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know what unit would you like to see featured on this channel next time. Hopefully these tips were helpful in giving you some confidence in your recording. If you found this video valuable, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and ring the notification bell so you won't miss more videos like this one. Once again, if you have a song you'd like mixed, get in touch with the link in the description. Let's schedule a call and get you the mixes you need so you can focus on creating your best possible music. Thanks for watching and happy mixing. I need some